specific standards. So what I'd suggest is that we ask the good city attorney to take a look at their letter, um, consider those changes, put them in ordinance form so that specifically we can focus on those changes requested by Uber and have the dialogue uh, at the December 7th meeting, the first reading, and the public hearing perhaps two weeks later so that we can give Uber representatives and other supporters a chance to, to make a case. If we don't do this, I think that we're going to be facing a, a Christmas season, holiday season, then a spring season as we have tourism coming back heavy in Portsmouth and businesses, conferences, um, without enough um, uh, transportation services. And that's what we're going to say. I think we need to be open for business. Um, I think all of us have talked about the 22,000 hotel rooms we have in the city and the, you know, the 2,000 hotel rooms and the 2,200, uh, 22,000 uh, lounge of seats and, and restaurant seats. And we, we have to provide ways for people to be able to get home, particularly late at night. So if we have a level field, if we make sure that we provide safety for our residents and visitors, and if we find a way to be able to uh, set up a more simplified process so that drive shares and everybody else can operate in the city of ours, I think we will have done something that we need to do. Okay. Council Shear and Council Morgan. I wanted to uh, suggest that if the Assistant Mayor would be so inclined, uh, a couple of friendly amendments. And they are these. Number one, if the city attorney could come back with the three suggestions separately so we can vote them at first reading separately because I feel differently about the three. And secondly, if they could also include a report back from the Transportation Services Committee, if they could meet before the before we consider first reading, I'd like to hear their input as well. So if that would be okay with your hand. I would certainly agree that the Transportation Services Committee is meeting this coming Wednesday. Right. Um, I think there will be some opinion from them and, and the uh, police chief and the police department. And I, I think the city attorney and the good city manager should also be welcome to offer us uh, their thoughts uh, when we're discussing this. You know, we want to get this right. I, I really don't know how I will vote on this. I just want to see us have an opportunity to give all the supporters and, and representatives an opportunity, a chance to, to make their case um, so that I think we did a great job in coming up with the ordinance we did, but uh, maybe there's a couple of changes. Council Morgan, then comes into a second or need to uh, agree to the friendly amendment, or is that just for hostile amendments? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I agree, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to support um, the uh, proposal from Councilor Spear, because that was what I had in mind too, if we had a way of um, bringing this to our transportation um, committee. You know, this committee and as Mayor is playing, you all have done a lot of good work. You know, you, you took a lot of time to listen to everyone, to all stakeholders, and you know, if there is indeed an opportunity for improvement, that you know, it doesn't hurt. But I appreciate then um, to have the input of the uh, Transportation Service Committee. Thank you. Okay, that was going to be my one of my questions as well. I had thought maybe the Services Committee had washed its hands of this. It was my understanding from one of the presentations that we had that it sounded like from Mr. Graciano's point that they in fact want to get back to be able to weigh in on it. So it sounds like we're saying that. Um, the three, um, driving record, uh, violent crime convictions, lack of transparency of appeal process. Is insurance coverage then not included in the None of the requested amendments uh, we have <coughs> have an effect on the city's insurance requirements. Although I think the first of the requested amendments has an effect on Uber's relationship with its own insurers and when that insurance, Uber insurance, would attach to a particular driver. Could you explain that more clearly? Sure. Um, I think Uber, by means of the first amendment that they're requesting, wants to make sure that there's no Uber liability for any action related to a driver prior to the time they actually pick up a passenger or after that passenger departs. I think that's the point of the first request of the amendment. But 
uh, it does not affect the city's requirements. Okay. We would still require Councilor Shaheen or Councilor Kennedy, anything? Councilor Kennedy, Councilor Kennedy, Councilor Kennedy, So my point is, we've become very selective on what we think we 
accountability for. And I, I think that is incorrect. I think we're inconsistent. Frankly, I, uh, I, I'm not in favor of going that far, and I'd like to see us uh, uh, treat uh, ride share and taxis the same way as we treat uh, the horse and buggy guy. He doesn't have, have to do a background check at all. Why not? So, now I'm not suggesting we start doing background checks on all these people. <laughs> I'm actually suggesting the very opposite. Councilor Shaheen or Council Kennedy, any comments?